This is a tutorial on programming recursive algorithms in MATLAB. The idea of recursion is to subdivide a problem into smaller problems that have identical structure to the initial problem and to call the function itself on the smaller problems. In other words, the function will take an input, do something to the input to make a modified version of the input that is identical in structure to the original input but simpler, and then the function calls itself on the modified input. Let's look at an example to illustrate this. In this example, we will be looking at finding a factorial recursively. Of course, a factorial can be found by using a for loop in a straightforward fashion, but the problem lends itself well to a recursive algorithm. This is because to find the factorial of the value x, we have to find the factorial of the value x minus 1, and so on until 1. The way this will look in MATLAB is as follows. We first define the function, function y equals fact of x. We have an input x and an output y. Then we simply call the factorial function on itself with a smaller input. Something like y is equal to x times fact of x minus 1. So let's say that we call this function with x equals 3. The function first calls y equals 3 times fact of 2. So y equals 3, the original input, times factorial of 2. Then, the internal fact function calls y equals 2 times fact of 1. y equals 2 times factorial of 1. Then this in turn calls y equals 1 times fact of 0. y equals 1 times fact of 0. And then this calls y equals 0 times fact of negative 1. y equals 0 times fact of minus 1, if we keep going. But this is clearly wrong. We want to stop when the input is 0. So we do not want something like this. So to stop at 0, we have to include another condition in our factorial function. Therefore, we'll add a block of code that looks like this. If x is equal to 0, then we'll say y equals 1. And we'll use the return command here, which basically just ends the function on that spot and doesn't execute any further. This terminating condition is extremely important in recursive functions, since without it the recursion would never stop. Now, once the output is 0, we start to unwind our recursions. At the next step, we see that y is now equal to, when we're coming back, y is equal to 1 times, well this call right here, when x is equal to 0, returns y is equal to 1. Therefore, from here we get that fact of 0 is equal to 1, and we get y is equal to 1 times 1, which is 1. Then we go up the, to the next level, because we got a return value for fact of 1, and now we have that y is equal to 2 times 1, where we got the 1 from over here, and this is equal to 2. Then we go up to the next level, because now we have a return value for fact of 2, and we get y is equal to 3 times fact of 2, which is 2, because that came from here, and that's equal to 6, and that's it. Our function is done, and we got a return value. Notice how we went from here, down to here, 
and then over here, then fact of zero returned something and we started to unwind and we went from here back to here and that was it and the function is finished. Let's see this when uh, actually executing our function with breakpoints and stepping through in MATLAB. So we'll, we'll place a breakpoint in the beginning of our function over here and we'll call it from the command window we'll say fact of let's say 5 when we hit execute we pause at this point here we can see that we call this with x equals 5 so we have a value of x equals 5 in the workspace when we step through this step by step we see that of course this condition doesn't go into this part because x is not equal to 0 so we go here and we call x which is 5 times fact of 4 and so now we're back into this function itself and you can see a white arrow over here which means that we are now within this function and at this current line where the arrow is green so we keep going and once again now x is equal to 4 and we call this on 4 times fact of 3 and we keep going now x is 3 now it's 3 times fact of 2 now 2 times fact of 1 now 1 times fact of 0 and once we hit this point this becomes true we go in here we set y equal to 1 and we start to unwind and we go back here and now we have a return value for fact of 0 and we execute this now we have a return value for fact of 1 fact of 2 3 4 and finally the entire function fact of 5 we're done and the value is 120 as we expect We can also add a little bit of code to make the function display how many levels of recursions it went through. In this case, the answer is simple since it will recurse as many times as the value of the input. However, this is not always so simple. We will add another input and output which will count the recursion level. So now, instead of having just one output, we're going to have another one which is going to be RL for recursion level and we'll also add another input RL as well and now let's add a little block that says if the number of arguments is less than 2 then RL is equal to 0 to initialize it otherwise RL is equal to RL plus 1 so each time it recurses it will add 1 to the recursion level and here we'll just print the recursion level with a percent u for an integer and we'll replace that with rl and finally we just need to add that optional input to our recursive call over here and we're done so now if we execute the same function Right, I'll take away this breakpoint. We can see that we go through five levels of recursions. So this allows us to see how deep we got in recursive calls. We go one level deeper for each recursive call, which in this case is exactly the value of the input. On your own, Try to go through this function and see what RL is going to be equal to at each level of the recursion as we previously did with the values of X and Y for the example with X equals 3. If you can do that, you will get a better understanding of how recursion works. Overall, the concept of recursion is a tricky one and requires some different thinking than other types of programming. To someone who is used to using loops, recursion requires a different mindset. It is a very valuable tool to learn, though, since it makes for very efficient algorithms, especially as the problem complexity increases. The underlying concept seems easy on the surface, but implementations can get tricky. Therefore, it is important to practice this style of programming to get good at its implementations.